discussing a very exciting and relatable topic. Um, we know that the basis and the foundation of life comes from two people coming together in love to form or recreate, right? So today we want to talk about the qualities of a man that make your relationship tick. As we, we can see, I have my two beautiful guests um, who will be representing the different categories of women, although it's not conclusive. I have um, the married woman here, Nomvula Jamini. I have the single lady here. Yeah, as you can see, she's flourishing. Yeah. She's ready to be scouted. <laughs> Not any time that you notice. No, okay, well. So I have Senator Badamini who's going to be speaking for the single ladies. What quality do you look for in a man that will make your relationship tick? What I know though is uh, women respond to love. When a man comes to love a woman, a woman will, will naturally respond to that love. So as a, as a woman, you have specific traits that you look for in a man. Um, sometimes we overlook, sometimes we compromise. But I feel like today we just want to talk about the reality and the truth of sticking to what you want and not even compromising. Because I feel like a lot of things that are going wrong in today's um, relationships, we're seeing a lot of divorces, we're seeing a lot of kids without parents, we're seeing, you know, so all of those things lead to, there's a spillover. Like we have seen this GBV coming up. We don't know the foundation or the basis of that GBV. Maybe it's from broken kids because of the divorces, maybe a whole lot of things, you know, that we can talk about. But let's start at the foundation. When you meet your man, what is it that you look for? In biology, we did a thing called natural selection where um, you have the choice to choose your, your, your partner based on whatever features that you would like them to have. Others would just say, I want my partner to have blue eyes so that we have nice kids. Those, those, those are issues that don't even add much to the livelihood of being. You know, yes, you want prettiness, but the value and the character of that person must edify your life, life right? Absolutely. I'm going to start with a pretty single lady to tell us, what do you look for in yeah. course? Yeah. <laughs> what do you look for, I mean, where now that will make you say, as in guys, this man, you know, yeah, you know, yes. you find me by the crawl. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> okay, I think fundamentally it's very important for a man to be principled. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's so very important for a man to be principled and grounded because that is going to inform the quality of decisions that he makes. Preferably, I would like for those principles to be rooted in the fear of God. Um, I have found that it's very difficult to deal with somebody who is um, who is a law unto themselves. Do you understand what I mean? Um, there's, there's, there's this leading narrative about a woman needing to submit and to serve and, 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 and. And that's okay, but I think also we need to be speaking to the quality of man that deserves or is worthy of being submitted to or, or a man who is worthy of being followed. So primarily for me, I look for someone who's principled and grounded. I look for somebody who is mature. There are certain conversations that you don't want to be having with someone because I expect that as a man in your mid-30s, mid to late 30s and your 40s, even there are certain things that you know already. I don't have to be talking to you about the importance of... Um, faithfulness. I don't have to be talking to you about having a healthy re um, relationship with money. I don't have to talk to you about uh, work ethic and, and the law of priority, you know. So there's, there's, there's quite a number of things that I'm looking for, but it's not just about optics, I think, you know. Mm -hmm. You're also looking for someone who... I'm past the stage where I'm looking for potential. Now I'm looking for someone who is, who is established and has accomplished certain things because the danger with potential is that sometimes you don't realize it. We've invested way too much in potential and I think. I know, I know exactly what you mean. I feel like you've, you've sort of summed a whole lot of things that um, are in my mind. Having gone the journey of being married, because I'm standing here um, representing uh, the divorced women, and what I would like to have going forward based on the ex experience I've had. So you know what? I went through this. This is the type of person I had. But it's not totally about that. It's about what I would like to sit different in my next uh, marriage. You're talking about issues of submission, which then um, plugs in religion as well. You know, mm -hmm. because religion has sort of... Um, created so many stereotypes, you know, without really looking at the re reality on the ground, you know. We 
I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want us to get much into that though. But I feel like it's a very important point that you raised, Sinetemba. That um, I think it takes back to what I said when we were introducing the subject that a woman loved right will always respond the way that she's supposed to. Absolutely. You know. So the issue of submission then becomes a non issue because. Okay, I'm tired, guys. So the natural thing for me to do is to honor him because submission basically speaks to honor. Yeah. Sure. Thank I you so much for that. I think um, let's keep it going though. Let's let's just hear a perspective from the married woman and then we'll we'll take it from there. Because um, hi. Oh, I'm sitting with Jamini. Yeah. Welcome yeah. <laughs> um, to the kingdom. Yeah. 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 Royal yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, tell us about your, your, you are married, you have, you've been married, what, six years now? Six years now. Six beautiful yeah. years even, because beautiful. you could be married for 20 terrible years. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not about how long you've been married, really, True. it's about the quality and how you feel in that marriage. Um, I've been fortunate enough to, to know you and your husband, and I've seen, you know, there's a thing about energy. People will say, oh, I'm happy, I'm what, I'm what. But when you look at them, you're like, ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so now I had the privilege to to be in the company of you guys. And you can tell, but you know, these people are friends. These people are genuine. They are, tell us about that, Tiet. I mean, what is it that's in your husband that makes you guys tick? Um, okay. I think the best thing I did for myself was marry my best friend. Guys. Okay. I met this guy and yeah, for me... It wasn't more about um, what he had, but it was about how he, th like his, his thoughts, they really, I think, I, like I always say, I always tell people that I, I think I fall in love with someone's mind. Mm -hmm. His thoughts were, okay, what I really fell in love with. Mm -hmm. He wasn't really the so most good looking, so yeah. <laughs> he wasn't really the most good looking guy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But he is, he is for me. But like eventually, you're like, oh my he gosh, he is. Yeah, you know, and then you're like, oh wow, my husband is really hard, guys. Mm. <laughs> but I, I think from, from what you're saying, what I'm getting is you want somebody with a plan. Yes. Right? Someone with a plan. Okay, because uh, not just a plan, because a plan could be potential. Yeah. Like, exactly. Like, it's, it's a plan. Probably you're not even part of that plan and, or anything. Um, as a woman, you want someone that will love you right. That's number one. I don't want someone that will just love me because you may love me. You that will lead to abuse sometimes. Mm. Obsession and what Obsession, what yeah, yeah, yes. um, I want. Yeah. I, I, I want to love. I love this man because he makes. He knows me, how to love you. Yes, he knows how to love me. I want. Before I'm married, I'm nomvula, and he allows me to be nomvula. Mm, like so I'm just nomvula, and then I'm married to him. Yeah, I'm, like yeah. the marriage doesn't define either one of us. Mm. We are together, but we are also individuals before we are together. So I Ooh. don't know if that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense, bro. <laughs> so, Actually, I'm getting. I don't even know I'm getting emotional about this. <laughs> Mm. So yes, um, yeah, w w pretty much. That's how that's how our relationship has uh, been. I've known him for how many years now? Huh? I think it's twelve, 12. years. Yeah, I've known him for twelve years. Yeah, maybe I've known him for twelve yeah. years. Yes, but we've only been married for six, and yeah. Uh, I, I like that. I think um, what I'm taking off from that, one of the most important things is the way in which a person loves you. Yes. Because there's someone who will say, I love, I love Kabago, but the way that, in which they love me doesn't record to me. Because then it brings us to love languages. Mm -hmm. Because if, 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 if I have my, my guy and all he knows is if I love a woman, I must feed her, for example. Oh, he buys food, he brings everything in the house. But to me, my love language is affection. He doesn't hold me, he doesn't, I feel I loved, you know. So those are some of the things that we, we need to be um, aware of because also as a woman, I feel like um, sometimes you, you'll be single, hey? And maybe you want a relationship and it's just not coming along, which leads to a state of vulnerability. 
on some level yeah. on some level you know so a guy comes and um, i remember it was september on the first um, um submission she was saying when she was younger she was um, concerned about optics and all of that yeah so i when i was younger i i used to i was so excited about eloquence like I was <laughs> if a guy speaks well to me go like yeah, 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 yeah you yeah, know yeah. but you move past that stage Absolutely. you know but like Going back to my point of vulnerability, you do sort of then go back to that point where someone will come along and just fill a certain void in your life, you know? And then without thinking much, you now feel like, oh, you, you know, maybe, maybe. Maybe just maybe. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think about that, Sinatema? What can you say to say, um, here's a guy coming to you, you've been single for like, I don't know, however long, eight months maybe, and now you feel like, oh, this partnership um, aspect of things is lacking and I, I just want to, a guy comes through and um, he's got things that you, he ticks a lot of boxes, but not all of them. What do you say about compromising yourself just to to be in a partnership? I think there's something very profound that Numbula said about mm. um, her partner allowing her to be mm -hmm. herself. Mm -hmm. I think being single is a time for you to find out what your preferences are, mm -hmm. what your likes, what your dislikes are, what your tastes are, and being truthful about those things. Um, the premise of loneliness as a start of a relationship is just a recipe for disaster. Mm -hmm. And I think the older you become, you just need to be more comfortable in your skin and in the person that you are. Um, don't have voids that need feeling mm -hmm. <laughs> as a single woman because then, because then you're literally a ticking time bomb. I believe that it's very important to have a life that is full. Um, I, 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 der I derive a lot of pleasure um, from my friendships, from my relationship with my son, with my family, with my friends, with my co it's a healthy balance. So when you're looking for a partner, you're looking for a companion who is going to come in and complement what you already have going. Um, and I think it's I think this narrative of women allowing themselves to be damsels in distress looking to be rescued is very dangerous. We need to move past that. We need to learn from other people's mistakes, you know. Um, I think I'm first getting a reputation for being queen of breakup because now if I see that this thing is not serving me, I will just terminate the relationship because it's not serving me on the level to which I expect to be to be served. Sometimes I'm at fault. You know, I will be asking for something from someone who doesn't have the capacity. Yes. So I think it also brings us to something that you mentioned earlier about how about how the way that in, in which you socialize is important. I think I think it's very important for men to swallow a mirror and do some serious introspection. Yes. What kind of a man am I? Yes. Um, and this and 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 my definition of masculinity. I I I just I was thinking about it this morning how a recent relationship um, this man had a toxic um, reference for what masculinity is mm. and he really was a boy who a man who loved his father but when he described the father to me he was a he was a Casanova of note mm. so without even maybe even thinking about it he is literally living Coming, yes he's becoming his father mm. and mm. passing and 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 upholding a toxic legacy so then I had to remove myself from that situation so I think it's very important as much as women invest in themselves and read and have conversations with other women mm. I think men need to be able to do the same yeah true, you know true, you you true. need to have somebody mentoring you and teaching you and and correcting and chastising you as well you cannot I think it goes back to what I said initially you cannot as a man be a law unto yourself you're going yeah. to be a very dangerous toxic man oh my gosh this is so <laughs> intense I, I I feel you I feel you because and you're bringing up um, valid points that need um, that we need to pay attention to um, as, a, as a woman who's been married um, I feel like uh, sometimes having gone my experience I would like to share just a bit on how I got into my marriage. The reason why I say a woman responds to life, I know exactly what I'm talking about because I literally lived that. I, I met a guy, he was okay, you know. He wasn't gaga, like you were saying. <laughs> because I like how Novula says, I met my guy, he wasn't the hottest or anything, but he was a person I knew I would be with based on what he was submitting to me, you know. The same thing happened to me. And I, I knew it was okay, you know what, I, I'm not totally in love with this guy, but I left room to say, you know what, he's probably going to love me right, and then I will grow to oh, loving to him, love him, you know. Mm -hmm. So which which brings me to the fact that sometimes 
the, the, those dynamics i feel like there's there's a thin line because mm. y- y- this is life and it's moving time is moving you don't have time to be getting into relationships and hoping i he love me and i just he's not doing it and then i get you know so i feel like you need to grow some some thick skin or some discernment of, of sorts i don't know how to say you know what from the onset someone has even saying you know it's better to be married for a week and realizing this is not working and just leave within that one yeah. week what we do, we realize probably within that one month that this is not it. But no, we keep hoping that no, maybe, maybe, maybe. And the red flags that you see in a relationship, while you guys are still in a relationship, they will never go away. Mm-hmm. We said they grow. They grow bigger and bigger. So whatever thing, the little traits, the way your partner treats a waitress, the way he treats a petrol attendant, it tells you a lot about the type of person they are. They are patients, you know, when, when there's traffic or when you're late, you know, how they respond to, to you in, in that um, lateness of yours. It tells you a lot. So this is the person you're going to be spending the rest of your life with. So when, if you're going to be compromising and saying, I know, Chef, he's going to change. Mm-hmm. Darling, it's, right. life is really short, guys. Life is really short to be settling, you know. So I think what we just want to preach today, what we want to emphasize is the fact that, guys, let's stop compromising, my ladies, my people. Let's stop compromising because then it leaves you with a life filled with bitterness because now you have to go through mm-hmm. healing. Healing is a process, guys. It, it goes on nice. forever and it's not yeah. a nice process. Yes. I understand, though, that um everything really does i think we're having this conversation with you that sometimes in the table that you know the, the the statement everything happens for a reason we say it without even thinking what it really means but like if you think about it everything does happen for a reason yes but let, you know, it's sometimes the reason is you're stupid yeah, exactly <laughs> <laughs> just avoid the reason yeah. altogether yeah, yeah, yeah. you think, know yeah i think also i when, when when you touched on the part about about compromise so I'm a mom, Mm -hmm. I'm a single mom, and the leading narrative that I grew up around was how, um, you know, in society they say, say, you know, so so the general perception is that now, now because you're a mom, you need to lower your standards. What I found, actually, Mm -hmm. though, um, now that I'm also a girl's mom, it's like, Actually, no, I need to raise the bar. bar. True. No, I actually need to raise the bar. The quality of men that I was looking for perhaps a few years ago isn't the mm-hmm. kind of men that I probably wanted One to be a child. Because it's not just about me. Mm-hmm. By extension, it's also f- about my son. He has a father, mm-hmm. and that is okay. But if it be- if he's going to expose to a male figure, then then this nigga needs to have his... He needs to come correct with his yeah, narrative. Sure you know, and not just what he says, but how he lives and um, how he demonstrates... The things that he believes in. So, um, I'm just saying that to echo to to, to echo like my sentiments. I would say this compromise business really doesn't work. I'm not talking about compromise in the context of a solid relationship. Was okay, maybe 50, 60, 40, whatever. I just mean, I just mean there are fundamental basics. There are things that you can't afford to compromise on because inevitably those things will cost you. And I think as an individual, as a woman, you know what things really matter to you. You know, you know things that you can't compromise on. For some people, it's financial stability, perhaps. For some people, it's exposure. For some people, it's financial stability. Whatever, whatever it is, the things that are important to you as a woman, it's very important not to compromise on those things because um, along the way. And also, speaking of kids, um, solid relationships yield solid kids. We are out here as single parents. You know, some of us did things right. But here we are. You know what I mean? Single parents again. And that breaks the kids. It's no longer just about you, like you were saying, Sinitema. Now there's other little humans involved. We we, we are dealing with a lot of um, gender-based violence. And I feel like we, we... with that, we are just dealing with the symptoms. We've not gone to, um, root deep of what is the real cause of this thing, you know. But for me, just top of head, I feel like these are just some of the things that um, we have angry kids, you know. My three-year-old, um, the dad was coming to pick them up the, uh, recently. And he's three. And he's like, Mom, can I go with you to daddy? 
do you know how much that broke my heart? You know, it, it's so heartbreaking. And you don't know what's happening to the child's mind mm -hmm. when it comes to union and togetherness, you know. Tomorrow, he's just going to be another man who's like, ah, women are trash or women are useless because, because of the experience that we've exposed them to, you know. It's, it's really, it's really unfortunate. And then um, we have men like Nomvula's husband, you know, who are present, you know, who are so present in their kid's life. Because sometimes you will be married. Yeah, but he's not present. He's not husband. present, you know what I mean? He's not even a present husband. You know what I mean? And I think that's the worst. Yeah, that a worst. lot of people are going through, but they will never talk about it. No, Whereas I feel plat platforms such as these are there to, to sort of create um, the reality check to say, this is what's on the ground, guys. This is what's going on. How do we deal with it? Because not talking about things means this is what's going on, but it's okay. Let's just leave it. Whereas when we talk about it, we're creating a, a help, a self-help sort of platform to say, this is the issue. How do we go past it? How do we heal from it? How do we make it work type of thing? So, yes. I want to talk about your your relationship with your your husband when it comes to kids. You know, I've seen pictures, although pictures can't lie, but yeah. like I've seen him being a dad. Hands on, how has that experience been for you? Um. Okay. For me, I know he's going to be like, oh, he's talking about that. <laughs> okay. My my hus my husband is more hands on with the kids than I am. Maybe that's why you've seen the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> because you're just there shooting. <laughs> No, um, it's. I feel like it's very important. Like I, I, I can't. I, not really that I can't. I think I'm just spoiled because I know mm -hmm. he does the homework. He does. He does everything. Oh, and I'm really? always like just there. Oh, yeah. You know you're doing that is great. So, that is so doing, cool. No, he's 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 the one that does most for the kids. And um, sometimes I don't know. It's it's not like he. I force him to do that. It's it's, it's, it's natural. It's just natural mm. to him. Good thing. Um, I remember there was a time I was working. He wasn't working. He used to stay with our son, baby at the yeah, time. Yeah, he used to stay mm. with our baby at the time, and he was just a baby, and he was okay. He was happy. He would go to class, come back, and stay with the baby. Do you know how and blessed you are? Do you know because I feel like having been. <laughs> Like it, this thing boils back to uh, I said something um, before I would say uh, before before the shoot about growth and um, when you were younger you want someone like this like that as you grow this thing is just like um, like we all have that you know I'm bringing this here because I mean we 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 we've, we've grew together like I've seen him grow and he's seen me grow oh, yeah. but he's also tried to we've both tried to grow together, to accommodate, to accommodate each other's yeah, growth as yeah. we grow because I mean I do not like maybe the things I used to like 10 years ago true and true it, you know you the, just the said process, exactly what I was about to say the crosses are there mm. but we just can't you know, to, yeah, that's where the, 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 the healthy compromise yes. comes so in we, so we then have yeah. to grow and I mean if we want the relationship to be okay for our children as well we're not just together for the kids that's like no, mm. it's you and him. It's me and him, mm. and then the mm. kids like the kids are there. They, so they, flexibility is very important. Very, very I remember important. someone once mentioned with him, that point that you're making that it's important to be accommodative of each other. She even made an example that, for instance, I used to love dry lemon mm. back in the day. Mm. Um, she she had the same. She's still with the same partner that she's been with for some time. Mm. So she was saying, I used to love dry lemon. So he always used to bring me dry lemon. So one time he brings dry lemon. I'm like, dude, dry lemon. I don't drink. I don't drink dry lemon. What's going on? So then she, the guy had to then be flexible enough to accept that. Okay, we've moved past the dry lemon phase. We are probably now in the apple tizer or whatever. And he's still moving along, flexible enough and accommodative enough. Very, very important. I, I appreciate that. It, something hit me when Nambula was speaking um, about how you know she was describing the kind of man that Lamini is, and you're like, you know how blessed you are. Mm. I feel the same way, but also I think I think I think a response of that nature is quite telling of the lack of quality men that we have yeah. because 
Lamini is doing what Lamini is supposed to be doing. He's just raising his he's child. He's just great. You know, he's, he's just raising his child. Yeah. That is what he should be doing. But because I think we live in a patriarchal society where men yeah. are entitled yeah. and women yeah. are, 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 are held to such a low standard, we end up applauding men for things that they should yeah. be doing. You should be taking care of your yeah. child. Uh, you so should child. be communicating with your partner. You should be growing, growing with me with because partner. that is what you committed to doing with me. And I think... I think it's very important for us to hear Emma, Emma narrative so that when you find yourself in something that kind of looks or hits differently, you're like, no, there's something mm, this wrong with this picture. Yeah. You know, because I think um, part of the problem, I think a big part of the problem that we find ourselves in as women today is because we were not told the truth. Yes. When we were set down, um, or when they tell us different things, they are just they were merely passing on a doctrine that is toxic. You know, um, you can't live just merely yeah. because he cheated. And infidelity mm -hmm. really hurts. Mm -hmm. No, you can't cheat. Just, you know, he's just being a man. So I think we need to I, I think we need to rewrite the narrative yes. so that it is correct. Yeah. So that when a girl um, expects to be respected and be treated as a partner, there's nothing sinister about that. And she's not just as for being strong or overbearing mm -hmm. or you don't want to mm -hmm. No, I, I do expect to be treated as a partner because I am such. I think yes. we need to raise our children to, to believe in the things that are correct. I think that will then translate to a healthier, happier, more progressive society. Future generation, that's yes. true. Because also, I think, okay, sorry, sorry so I also, I, I think it brings me to, to the fact of one other quality, which is teachability. There's nothing more important yes. than having someone who's teachable because we come from different break, backgrounds. You know, I probably come from the burbs, he probably yes. comes from the hood, yes. and there's totally nothing wrong with that. What matters is we're coming together to create our culture. We morph into each other and, you know, so whatever that I'm trying to teach you and whatever that you are trying to teach me to create, to let's yes. be willing to learn. There's nothing as painful as being with someone who's just head, head strong over things that are just over distracting, you know, <laughs> over, over nonsense. Yes, that's just it. Man into a demonic doctrine. I'm telling you, this person yes. is just not having it. Yeah. And you're just like, yeah, dude, I remember, oh my gosh, I remember how... I'm very vocal. I talk about things. And when I was married in the early stages of my marriage, I was trying to raise an issue. But yet there's an issue here. And I kept trying to talk about it. And I, no one was paying attention to me. Until one time, when I tried to raise it, I was told, listen here. Yeah. I'm tired of hearing you saying this one and the same thing. This is not a response to what I've been asking for. It's just to say, look, just shut up about that, that, that thing. Mm -hmm. Poor my Do you know how hurtful that is? So it means I'm stuck forever. In that situation. Whenever this thing happens, I can't talk about it because what's your tool like? So this this is the life. This is forever and ever. This is your forever and ever. No, no fam, no. And then way. now there was the issue of we actually track. Does he beat you? No. Does he smoke? Does he drink a lot? Does he sleep with other women? Does he go home and never come back? No. Which brings us to another system that society has, has, has imbibed or, or, or harnessed for so long. Because it's like these are the things, these are the confines in which you are then allowed to live. If that doesn't happen, that emotionally you're not okay or, 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 or mentally you're not being taken care of, care of, you can't voice it out to, and no one will listen because it's like, I got shy more. So what's your problem? You know? So I feel like a lot of us have, have, have sort of suffered for so long because we don't even know what to say, you know. Yes. We don't even know how to get out of this toxic relationship because there's no tangible thing that you can present to say, then and now I have a blue eye, I was beaten, you know. So, yeah, guys, it's been and good, man. I, I think we could go on and on. Yeah, we pick this conversation up okay. another time. I think yes. let's pick it up another time. Let's, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys, for coming yeah, to me. I'm yeah. sure, I'm sure our people are happy. And thank you and for listening, guys. Yeah, yeah. for the insights yeah. that you guys shared here today. I'm sure everyone is going to be doing some self-introspection, yeah. you know, because like I said, life is too short, fam. Life is really too short to spend it with someone you don't even get along mm -hmm. with, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it's been good. We love you. We love you. We love you. Bye. Bye.